Hello, can you multiply 86 times 7 and do it in your head? Keep watching to find out how. Hello, you're watching Mental Math Secrets, your secret weapon for success. My name is Jason from MathTutorDVD.com and in this a little tutorial we're going to learn how to multiply two digit numbers by any one digit number and we're going to learn how to do it in your head with a little practice you'll be able to multiply any two digit number times any one digit number in your head now some of the previous sections have been uh, very rapid calculational tricks uh, some of them you could even call them tricks shortcuts for very special cases this section is not like that at all this is a very general technique and what you will find out is that it applies to any two digit number multiplied by any one digit number and because of that you will use this one probably more than any of the other ones I've shown you so far because it's so powerful and it's so fast but what you need to do is uh, sort of erase how you already know how to multiply here's a here's a very simple multiplication problem we're going to work our way up just so you can see what to do here the way you would uh, well most people have this memorized 12 times 2 is 24 but we're gonna start small if you weren't going to do it uh, by by memorization by your by your multiplication tables then you would multiply 2 times 2 and get 4 and then 2 times 1 and give you 2 in the front and that would be 24 what I want you to do is forget about doing it uh, sort of right to left uh, that's how multiplication is typically taught we're going to work left to right but what we need to do is realize that 12 is really when you think about it it's the number 10 plus the number 2 right much like you know uh, 37 is you know the number 30 plus the number 7 so you get the idea you know 58 would be 50 plus 8 the first digit here the 1 represents a value of 10 and the second digit is just sort of the ones digit so it's hanging on there so when you do a multiplication like this when you go left to right when you multiply 2 times 1 what you need to realize is that you're really not multiplying 2 times 1 here. You're really multiplying 2 times 10 because this 1 has a value of 10. And we sort of know this. Everyone I think watching this knows this, but it's not something we think about because we're always taught to go right to left and mechanically write everything down. So when you multiply 2 times this 1 here mentally, what you're doing is multiplying 2 times 10. So the result of that multiplication, if you were to mentally hold an intermediate answer, would be uh, 20, right? 2 times 10 would give you, me 20. And then, of course, I've got this 2 hanging out here. Now, when I mentally multiply 2 times 2, I'm going to get 4. And it, this value is just regular old 4 because this 2 up here is just a value of 2. So what I end up having here is 20 plus a value of 4. And I know that everyone here watching this can multiply or can add 20 plus 4, giving you the 24. Now, I'll admit, for an easy problem like this, this seems like a... Um, uh, extra amount of work that's not going to get you anything but I promise you that when you do this with higher numbers it's going to actually make you uh, enable you to multiply those numbers fast what you need to do is when you look at a at the two-digit number here don't view this first digit as a 1 or a 3 or a 5 view it as a 1 or a 30 or a 50 and uh, let me give you one more benefit even if you don't carry through the entire multiplication uh, doing this first multiplication in your head two times one giving you or two times ten giving you twenty even if you don't carry on with the rest of it it gives you a ballpark answer an estimation in other words without even doing the rest of the multiplication so if you have a very large number just by doing the first digit multiplication you're going to get an idea of the magnitude of the answer without actually calculating the whole thing which is great for estimating uh, numbers like on an SAT you can easily eliminate answers if you can just kinda get a ballpark feel okay here's our second problem I know that a lot of you know what 16 times 2 is some of you do some of you don't uh, 16 times 2 is 32 I happen to have that memorized because I've, I've done that a lot a lot of people may not know that if you were gonna do it the old-fashioned way you would multiply 2 times 6 giving you 12 you'd write something down you carry the one you would multiply and you add doing a lot of carrying like that is difficult to do in your head so we're not gonna do it backwards like that we're going to realize that 16 is really 10 plus 6 and that's something you know but it's something that when we do these techniques you have to really hang on to so when I multiply 2 times 1 I'm not doing that I'm actually multiplying 2 times 10 so as an intermediate answer I'm actually getting a value of 20 in my head really really quickly 
And uh, if I stop there, at least I have sort of a ballpark idea of how big this number is going to be. So I have 20, uh, but I still need to do another multiplication. 2 times 6 gives me 12. Uh, okay, so here's where we come into uh, using our addition techniques that we've learned earlier in the course. 20 plus 12, if you've mastered those techniques, I'm sure all of you can do this in your head. The way you would do it is 20, and then you would, because this is adding 12, you would go 30, because we have 10 here wrapped up in the 12, and then 32, because of the 2 left over here. Uh, so it's really worth your while to go back and master the addition technique. So again, starting with 20, 32. The answer is 32. All right, our next problem is 22 times 3. Now, what we're going to do is realize again that 22 is really 20 plus 2. So when we do this leading multiplication, 2 times 3 giving us 6, we don't actually have 6. We actually have 60. So really what you're doing is you're doing this multiplication and you're sticking a 0 on the end of it. And that's what you're going to do for every one of these problems. You're going to add to that, multiplying the second guy here, 2 times 3 gives us 6. And I know that everyone here can add these together, giving us 66. Now up until this point in this lesson, I think most people could probably do a lot of these multiplication problems in your head. I'm going to venture to guess that from here on out in this lesson, most of these problems coming up you probably wouldn't be able to do in your head before tackling this course, but we're going to do it here. I'm going to stop writing out that this is really 20 plus 7 because I want you to start to visualize that, but well, that's what we're going to use here. 2 times 3 gives us 6, but it's not really 6, it's 60 because this 2 is really a value of 20. So adding to the 60, mentally in our head, we're going to do this. What's 7 times 3? I think all of you know 7 times 3 is 21. All right? 60 plus 21, do it by the addition methods that we've used before. So starting at 60, we'll count up 70, 80, and then 1, giving us a value of 81. All right, our next problem is 37 times 3. We're going to speed up the pace here just a little bit. 3 times 3 is 9, but it's not 9, it's really 90. So we'll keep 90 in our head mentally, and we'll need to add to that 7 times 3 is 21. 90 plus 21, starting at 90. 100, 110, 111. 37 times 3 is 111. Okay, our next problem is 46 times 5. Starting out, 4 times 5 gives us 20, which is really, when you think about it, 20, but we have to add a 0, so it's 200. When you really think about it, this is a value of 40, so 40 times 5 is what we're doing, but it's easier to think about as 4 times 5 gives us 20, add a 0, because this really has an implied 0 here. So adding to 200, we have 6 times 5 gives us 30. And of course this, when you add 200 to 30, you get 230. So 46 times 5 is 230. And this is a prime example of how incredibly fast this is. Doing 46 times 5, I think most people probably wouldn't try to do it in their head. But you see how easy it is when you realize this is really 200, plus this giving you 30, giving you 230. And even if you didn't take it all the way to the end, even if you didn't even do this part, if all you did was 4 times 5 giving you the, the, two, the 20, which is really the 200, then you really have a pretty good ballpark answer. You're not exactly close to the answer because you haven't finished, but even if you just stopped here as an estimation, getting a value of 200 can really help you on a standardized test if you're trying to eliminate answers. Okay, our next problem is 65 times 5. What we're going to do is take 6 times 5 gives us 30, but it's not really 30, it's 300. We have to add a zero to that because of the placeholder here. We're going to add to that multiplying these. 5 times 5 gives us 25. And lo and behold, the answer is 325. 65 times 5, 325. Okay, our next problem is 72 times 2. What we're going to do is take 2 times 7 is 14, but it's not really 14, it's 140. We have to add a 0 because of the placeholder, because of the value of the 7 here. We'll add to that, 2 times 2 gives us 4. And when we add these together, we'll get 144. 72 times 2 is 144. Now let's do something a little more challenging. 72 times 7. We're getting into some pretty large and impressive numbers. But we'll work the same way. 7 times 7 is 49. But it's not really 49. It's 490. We add 0 because of the place value of the 7 here. We'll add to it. 7 times 2 is 14 in our head. And we add by the same methods as before, starting at 490. 
Uh, adding this value of 10 here gives us 500 and then 504. So in our head, the answer is 72 times 7 is 504. Okay, next is 86 times 7. We will take 8 times 7, which is 56, but it's not really 56, it's 560, which is a pretty darn good estimate of this final answer, even if we don't go any farther. But we will go farther and take 7 times 6, giving us 42. And so we need to add these together. So we'll start at 560 and add from there, 560, 570, 580, 590, 600, 602, 602. Okay, this is our final problem. Our last problem, I really wanted to do a really large number. 96 times 8 is a pretty big set of numbers, just to show you how powerful this is. But nothing has changed. 8 times 9 is going to give us 72, but it's not really 72. It's 720. We add the 0 there because of the placeholder of the value of the 9. Next, we add to that 8 times 6, which is 48. So we'll add 8 times, we'll add 48 to the answer there. And we're going to add the same way we add before. So we start with 720. 730, 740, 750, 760, 768, 768, 768. And you can see that even if you didn't do the second part, 720 would be a pretty reasonable estimate if you're really just trying for a ballpark estimation of this answer. So I hope you can see from these uh, little examples here that multiplying any two-digit number times any one-digit number is very, very, not only possible, but with some practice, you can get very, very good at it and fast at it. And because we multiply so often these two-digit numbers times one-digit numbers, this would be something that you can use for a variety of different courses and tests. And uh, it really isn't a math trick. Some of these other things that we're teaching in the other lessons are really, they're special cases for special type of calculations. This is a really general one that applies to something we do every day, so it's incredibly useful. I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com. I hope you've enjoyed this. Practice it. Get a pencil and paper out. Uh, write a few problems out. Get a calculator. Check your answers, and you'll get really, really good at this method.